Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Tosin, I'm GP Registrar in the UK, I'm also a health coach. Today I'm going to be addressing a question that I have been asked quite a number of times by a number of colleagues and friends from our other countries and it's how to become a doctor in the UK as an IMG and that IMG stands for an International Medical Graduate. It's quite a broad question and I think the best thing to start with is to figure out where are you in your training. That's always the first step. Have you just finished medical school? Are you already training back in your country? That really determines the answer to the question. There are a couple of routes that we can discuss or we will discuss and I'll try and put the links in the notes. Before we continue, I'd just like to ask anyone if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the bell button there for any notifications for new content which I'll be putting out very, very regularly. Right, how to become a doctor in the UK as an international medical graduate. Usually the commonest group is the PLAB. PLAB stands for Professional Linguistic Assessment Board. It's a two-part exam that essentially tests your English skills, hence the word linguistics, and your communication skills and it also assesses your level to operate as a safe doctor on the foundation level. Foundation is a FY1, FY2. It's equivalent to the housemanship or internship in other countries. And um, exam is not that difficult to be very honest with you in comparison to the USMLE or the Canadian exam if that's the um, other exams that you were planning to take. So if you've just finished or you're somewhere, you're already an experienced person, usually the first step is to take the PLAB exam. More than likely, you will need to take an English qualifying exam called the IELTS, or there's a new one called the OETS, I think. I'm not too sure. I'm not conversant with that information. It's quite a while ago that I wrote the exam. That would be one of the routes. There are numerous specialties um, over here that one that you can be funneled through. It can include um, surgery, GP, medicine, pediatrics, psychiatry, yes, the whole lot. My background, I was originally working as an orthopedic registrar before I did a U-turn or switch and went into GP for family, personal and reasons and life reasons. Um, that's another discussion for another time. I think I'll quickly touch on that since we're talking about it. If, for instance, you are working as a surgeon, an orthopedic surgeon, general surgeon, plastic surgeon, wherever you are in your country, one advice I'll probably give is try and sit the MRCS exam if you have not already. It tends to gives you good footing and people that if you once you get the MRCS you you will be exempted from sitting the PLAB. For colleagues and friends out in countries like India or Pakistan uh, where you've done an equivalent level of qualifications like the MS Auth or the Ames Institute for instance you probably will be exempted from sitting the PLAB and with your qualifications you should be able to get into the system without writing the plan. Usually for that, I think more information will be on the GMC website. We'll put links here again in the notes. I would essentially advise you register on the NHS jobs website where jobs are posted regularly and you can apply for a job on equivalent job there. Also in that route, if you have completed your training back in your country and you can sit the MRCS exam, you can also come through the route called the MTI route. A medical training initiative program it's a two-year route it's a bit limited but it's a stepping stone that people use to get into the country so MTI route write the MRCS exam going back to PLAB the PLAB exam um, after sitting the PLAB exam the usual route is people get jobs as junior doctors at the SHO level interestingly registrars here are still classified as junior doctors for the pay scale reasons but when we say junior doctor I will be referring to foundation level doctors or SHOs who can get a job and come into the country as an SHO. Like we said, the easiest way would be to get through the PLAB exams, get on, get search for standalone jobs on the NHS website and um, try and see if you can get an SHO job. Depending on what particular specialty you want to do. At the moment, I'm a GP trainee, so I technically I have a bit of bias towards GP training. It is one of the smoothest pathways 
to become a doctor in the country. It's a three year training program. There is a discussion where it might become five years very soon. So I said, if you are asking the question, when is the best time to come to the UK? The answer is now. Obviously, at the time of me shooting this video, there is the overlooming possibility or definity of Brexit happening and we do not really know what is going to happen after that happens. So if you want to get in the country, we always advise you get now, try and get jobs. There are a lot of jobs there. The medical field, right, a lot of doctors are disillusioned and not happy with the NHS system. I personally think the NHS system, um, although it needs improvement, it is one of the best healthcare systems around because of the way it's structured. I mean, it does have its faults and its problems, but for a system that has stood over 50 or 70 years now, it's, it's done quite well. So yes, yeah, so the PLAB exam is one of the routes to get into the country. An outlier and of note is two specialties. If you're part of two specialties, you can be exempted from PLAB. One is pediatrics and the other is psychiatry. So if you finished your equivalent training back in your country in psychiatry or pediatrics, I would say get on the GMC website, look for the eligibility criteria to be exempt from the PLAB exam. I definitely know they're short of pediatricians and psychiatrists in the country and those jobs are quite sought after and you should be able to get interviews and job prospects. One advice I'll give is um, working on your CV. A lot of international medical graduates are not really savvy in prepping up your CV. If you go on the job website, you see things like person specification, job description. So you have to try and match to see those things. And people tend to struggle when it comes to areas like audit, research, leadership. One advice I'll give is leadership is what you've done. It doesn't have to be something big like you leading a march or walk. I mean, simple things like you teaching medical students in your place, get it documented, get evidence for it, put it in your portfolio. You've taught medical students, you've orchestrated something. Another big thing here is um, something called, um, the word escapes me now, I can't remember it now, where you make changes, there's essentially any changes you've structured, anything you've helped put in place. We work and you can put all those little things in your CV, any little thing you've done that you may not think is significant, your hobbies, your extracurricular activities, things that can show leadership, any form of research that you've done also can be put there needs to be put there partaking in audits whether abroad or in the country if you get here obviously that's something you can get to if you are planning to go into the surgical specialty it is a bit competitive as of the last time of the exam the ratio had improved slightly it used to be one to five but i think it had come down to one to three um, which means that there were three applicants for every one surgical job i mean orthopedics that was available then um, so the ratios have improved and in these particular areas you have to work on your cv very well now if you plan to apply for specialties after taking plab the route for surgery is going through core surgical training which is a two-year program and the core medical training i think the core medical training is now three years i think as for this August, if I'm correct, it's now a three year program. And obviously to get on those programs, the core surgical training program, you are advised to have gotten your MRCS or be in the process of writing the MRCS. For medicine, it to be the MRCP. And for these two specialties, obviously, like I said, you have to, all specialties anyway, make, make sure you've got a very robust CV, which is one of the things that can get you onto the specialty training program. For links on to how competitive the specialty training programs are, um, we'll put a link there. You usually go to the Health Education of England board or there's a particular website, um, I think it's Humberside and Yorkshire, but try, try and get the link and put it there that tells you the, the competitive rates, how the competition ratios for each specialty as of the time of application. Yes, yeah, so PLAB exam, most common way to get into the country, usually you write the IELTS or the OETS before that. MRCS exam, if once you've done that, you can be exempt and the MRCP too, as well, you can be exempt from writing PLAB. The MTI, Medical Training Initiative, if you've completed training in your country 
and uh, possibly have done the MRC as well as a two-year program where you get into the country just generally applying for jobs through the NHS jobs website now another way people tend to come into the country but you don't necessarily start work as a doctor obviously is to come in and do a master's program um, when you come in you start your master's program you get a feel of what the country is like try and do a couple of elective programs or shadowing them um, there's a term for it now that I can't remember yeah like you temp a period and see what the system is like before applying and deciding where you want to go that's one of the routes as well I think those are the major things I've covered another thing that people tend to forget is it can be expensive writing the PLAB exam each exam costs average anything from 300 to 500 pounds a registering with the medical council GMC is roughly 400 pounds and if you're planning to write the MRCS the first exam is like 400 pounds the second exam the MRCS part B is a thousand pounds plus so there are big expenses that come with writing this exam so you have to be prepared and save yeah save money save early and get those finances in place as well another issue where things might change slightly soon around the areas of getting the visa to come to the country a lot of people get caught out by a lot of these things so i'll say be very savvy around this area i'm not do not have that um information regarding the visa application here so it would be wrong of me to offer false information but i do know it's an area that catches people out as well in the application obviously and also getting your references sorted on time just to jump back if you're coming in as a standalone doctor you'd have to show evidence of foundation competencies before being able to apply for specialties one way to do it is to come into the country and go through the foundation year program foundation year one or year two another way to do it, an alternative is if you have done your training uh, back home or you're working as a doctor you can get your competencies signed off the alternative competencies signed off it's a form online if i am able to locate it i'll get it for you it's an alternative competence form where you can sign off the competencies now it's a bit tricky some people have have been able to sign it off in their country and submitted it to the as part of the application into specialty training and has been accepted what people mostly do is when you come and you get your job as a standalone you use that six month period or one year period to sign off the competencies but if you can get it signed off back at home in your country and it's valid that's very brilliant and I'd advise you do that get it sorted get it out of the way and come into the country in the summary PLAB one of the ways always you're probably going to write the IELTS before that get the MRCS MRCP if you can get those exams you'll be exempt from PLAB the MTI route is also there if you're a surgeon specialty training another thing i like to mention is you can get a straight job if you've got equivalent training and actually there is the frcs international exam which i think a lot of people are not really aware of where you can start writing your frcs as an international graduate so it might be worth looking into as well so if you type in frcs international it should bring up a link in google for you to check yeah let me know what you think subscribe to my channel if you haven't already share this post on social media you feel i'll mm -hmm. be happy if you do get more information to people drop some comments below let me know if i've missed anything any questions you want me to answer and i'll try and get you as much information as possible thank you very much it's yours truly dr tosin